Give it up for Manitoba. Amazing. Good job, Christy. If you want to get involved with Manitoba, I believe they meet Monday nights. And um, I'm just so prou proud to see so many of those ladies up there. And did you see all those little girls? They're so sweet. They're so, so sweet. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to see you on a Sunday night. Come on, it's a good turnout for a Sunday night. Did you guys enjoy Dr. Morocco this morning? It was so good to have him in the house. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Give it up for these awesome guys carrying the cross. Hallelujah. Well, I, I've got a word for you tonight that the Lord's been just stirring in my heart. Um, you know, last week it was Easter and such a powerful time, you know, just leading up um, to Easter. How many of you were here? I think it was a Wednesday night. I preached about uh, the week that changed the world. And I just been diving into the story leading up to uh, Jesus going to the cross. And, you know, something that really caught my attention was maybe a detail that can be overlooked at times. And so we're going to dive in and I'm going to talk to you about a person that maybe doesn't get talked about a lot, but God really showed some profound revelation revelation that has really ministered to my heart. So I want you to turn to three places. Uh, Matthew, why don't we stand for the reading of the word? Matthew 27, 32 is going to be our first spot. Luke 23, 26, and then Mark 15, 21. All right, let's read it together. They're very short verses, but they're all of the same account, but in different gospels. All right, so we know that the four gospels are just different accounts of Jesus's journey here on this earth from different perspectives, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we're gonna start with Matthew and it says, verse 32, along the way, they came across a man named Simon who was from Cyrene and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus's cross. Luke 23, 26 says, and they led Jesus away. A man named Simon who was from Cyrene happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Now turn with me to Mark 15, 21 and 22. It says, they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the school. Let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you that you are already here. Your presence is already moving in this place and touching hearts. I pray, Lord, for a fresh anointing, God, upon me as I minister your word, God, that hearts would be pierced and changed and stirred, God. I thank you right now that you would just begin to speak, Lord, to every person. Open our ears and open our, our hearts to receive tonight. And we just thank you, Lord God, that as we come, we come leaning into the word, receiving the word. Lord, not just be having a go in one ear and out the other, but Lord, we want to digest it, live it, Lord God, and it be activated in our lives in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated tonight. So the title of my message is The Blessing of a Cross Bearer. The Blessing of a Cross Bearer. Here's a man who traveled 1,500 miles from a distant land minding his own business, walking in a busy city, busy streets in Jerusalem during the Passover season when all of a sudden he is grabbed, he is seized by soldiers and compelled or forced to carry Jesus's cross. Along the Via Della Rosa, for those of you that have been to Israel with us, in the city of Jerusalem, there's a place that Jesus had to walk down these narrow, stony places, down where everybody, where the markets happen and where life is happening, that Jesus had to carry it through there. And that's where Simon had to pick up the cross all the way to Golgotha, which means the place of the skull where he was executed. What did this encounter produce in this man? What did this unsuspecting moment do in the life of Simon? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever wondered what happened to that man that was pulled out of a crowd, out of hundreds of people to carry the cross of our Lord and Savior? Well, tonight I wanna dive a little deeper and talk about this man named Simon. 
And I want to share with you about the blessings of a cross bearer. So who is this man, Simon? Let's dive into a little bit of history. How many of you like history? History buffs, you like learning a little bit more? Uh, I, I love diving in and, and learning. You know, there's so many layers to the Bible. I just want to encourage you. I'm just going to take a pause break right now. If you feel like the Bible is one note, I really encourage you to learn how to study the Bible because there's so many layers upon layers upon revelation upon revelation. It says it is living and active. And you might have read that scripture before, but, but being inspired by the Holy Spirit, understanding how to study the word of God and understanding the context of what happened, the, the scripture will literally come alive. And that's what I feel like happened to me as I was studying this scripture. I said, oh, I gotta share it with the church. I gotta share it with you. So I'm sharing with you my revelation of what the Lord gave. All right, so let me give you some history. He was from Cyrene, a city in Northern Africa, which is a modern day Libya, all right? I think they might even have, oh yeah, they have the, the, the map up behind me. The city's population was probably about 5,000 people and the Greeks made Cyrene into a trade outpost. So we know that he was probably close to the water. Cyrene was thought to have many to have a very large Jewish community, even though you can see on the map, let me just kind of show you. See, Libya is over here, and we can suspect that uh, uh, what the town was probably close to the water, and here's Jerusalem. So it was a very long journey for this man to come to Jerusalem, but we could suspect that there was maybe a large Jewish community there, and so maybe he was traveling. We don't know for certain, but maybe he was traveling because it was the Passover, and Jewish people would travel all from all around the world to come to those feasts or those seasons like the Passover and those special times where they gather in Jerusalem. So this is a man who came from a long distance and probably was really excited to come to Jerusalem and unsuspecting to him had to be put in one of the most horrific positions ever. But I call the next, time, the next moment the unexpected encounter. Entering the city, he encountered a procession of death. Heading out of the city and before he could even begin to absorb what was happening, the Roman soldiers seized him and made him carry the cross. I can only imagine that he's shocked, that he's devastated, he is confused. What is going on here? Why is he having to carry this man's cross? Who is this man? I think questions that come in my mind is, did Simon and Jesus exchange words or just possibly a glance or a look? Did Simon feel the pain and the warfare, the sacrifice and the love that Jesus was holding, that Jesus was exuding, the presence of Jesus just near him? Did Simon feel that? Did he stay? at the cross during his crucifixion? Did he hear about the resurrected Lord once Jesus was resurrected? Did he go home and tell his family about Jesus? See, never, never underestimate one moment, one encounter. And even in the most horrific of circumstances, something happened to this man. And I want to show you, it's called the ripple effect. And just like a stone is thrown into the water, if we don't read into this and understand what those little verses are saying, we would never know truly the huge impact of that man carrying Jesus's cross happened to him that day. See, he had plans. He, had, he probably had people to see and things to do and business and whatever he had, but that day everything got interrupted. Everything was stopped and put to a halt because he was grabbed out of the crowd to carry Jesus' cross. So you might say, Pastor Shannon, how is this a ripple effect? Well, it's very interesting that you asked. But I want you to look back at Mark 15, 21. And you might have noticed what is different, different in Mark than in the other two verses that I read you. Well, let's read it again. It says, They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the countryside. Read it with me. The father of who? Of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. Did you see Alexander? Scriptures? No. 
Who in the world is Alexander and Rufus? Well, let's dive a little bit deeper. In order to understand why Simon of Cyrene was identified as being the father of Rufus and Alexander, we need to remember that Mark most likely wrote his account of Jesus' life while he was in Rome to Roman Christians. They may not have known Simon of Cyrene, but they knew his son Rufus. <laughs> oh yeah, it gets good. We can connect Rufus with Rome because of Paul's letter to the Romans many years later. Stay with me. Are you guys with me here? Are you, are you tracking? Because this, this is getting good. We're, we're following the, the clues of what, what happened to that man, Simon, and what happened to his sons. In Romans 16, 13, if you got your Bibles, in Romans 16, 13, get this. Put it up there. Oh, love it. Greet who? Rufus. Now that's a fun name, Rufus. Anybody got a name Rufus in here? That's like a dog name, right? Isn't there like Rufus? Isn't there? Sorry. I'm like, I feel like there's a movie with their dog Rufus. I don't know. Okay. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. And who? Here's another character entering the scene. His mother, who had been a mother to me too. Who's talking in this? The Apostle Paul. Ooh, I let it soak in a little bit. Is that, this is how exciting I was getting. I felt like I was a detective figuring all this out. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Ruf, Rufus, the son of Simon, was in the Bible in the book of Acts, and then his mother? Yes. From these two mentions, we gather that Rufus was a believer and the son of the man named, of this man of the na uh, man named Simon. It would appear based on what Mark and Paul write that Rufus and his family became Christians after Jesus' death and resurrection. Remember, one encounter. One encounter. Rufus and his brother Alexander were apparently well known in the church or Mark would have not mentioned them and Rufus and his mother must have been quite active in the ministry based on Paul's specific greeting to them. Are you seeing the impact? How this man that got pulled out of the crowd, that traveled 15,000 miles, that didn't know what was going on, that God had a plan, God had a purpose, not just for him, but his family and beyond. Wow, it gets better. Are you ready for the next thing? How about Alexander? So, I know I'm getting really excited because this is so good. You should get excited about the Word of God. You should get excited. So even more intriguing is the possibility that an ossuary of his brother, Alexander, survived. You might say, Pastor Shannon, what in the world is an ossuary? Glad you asked me again. You guys are really doing good tonight in asking me really, really good, thoughtful, provoking questions. So an ossuary, oh, you guys are great back there. You're like, quick. In ossuaries, were stone boxes used to contain a person's bones after the body has decomposed. You see those? See those right there? Well, in 1941, some ossuaries were found in a tomb in the Kidron Valley. You remember when I showed you the Kidron Valley? The city of Jerusalem's here. The Kidron Valley is down here. And I showed you all those for you, those who were here on Wednesday night. You saw all those tombs, and then it went up to the Mount of Olives. <laughs> So they found in the Kidron Valley, one of them, now a tomb, it said one of them had several inscriptions. You want to know what it said? One of them said, Alexander of Cyrene in Aramaic. And the other inscription said, Alexander, son of Simon in Greek. That's it. I get chicken skin right now. <laughs> This is so awesome. This is, they actually f found. Now, it's pretty obvious because it has two descriptions that we can conclude that that ossuary was holding Alexander's bones, the remnant of the man who carried Jesus's cross. Dr. Morocco told me today, I shared with him a little bit. I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking about sharing. And he goes, you know, you know that they found, they think that they found James, the brother of Jesus' ossuary as well. Incredible. 
incredible that they can date back that long because there was the inscription of it on it and it says Jacob or James son of Joseph brother of Jesus on his you don't think the Bible's real? You don't think Jesus is real? This is scientific evidence that what we read in the Bible is real, that we're living it, that we're part of it, that this is awesome. We're not, ser we're not serving no dead God. We serve a Je Jesus who's a living. Oh my goodness, so good. So good. So we can conclude that four members were impacted by that encounter so how does this apply and speak to us tonight? I know I gave you a lot of history. Now I'm pulling it home like I like to always do. See, I believe we can learn some key lessons from Simon's encounter with Jesus that day. So I'm gonna share some lessons from a cross bearer. The first lesson I think that we can learn is interruptions can be a holy setup to meet Jesus. The word interruption, some synonyms are intervention, interference, stopping. That day he was stopped. Simon was stopped in his tracks. He had a plan. He was going somewhere. Obviously he had a plan because he traveled 1,500 miles, but only God knew that, that, that he had a different plan, an interruption, but a divine interruption to stop him in his tracks, to intervene in a situation because he knew that this man would not only be touched by the Lord Jesus, but his sons and his mother, and they would be a big part of the church, the early modern church. We don't even know how great of impact that they had, but we can see by the few things that we find that they were involved, that they were doing things for Jesus, all because of this one interruption, this holy encounter, this holy setup to meet Jesus. See, that's why we pray every morning in early morning prayer is because we're praying for our loved ones to have a holy encounter. We're praying that God would meet them in their jobs and meet them in their bedrooms and meet them in their cars, meet them wherever they are, even in the lowest point or the highest point that Jesus would meet them. And you know what? Sometimes we need interruptions. Sometimes we need to be stopped in our tracks because we're so busy. We're so focused with our plan, our agenda, where we want to go, and we need to meet Jesus. We need an encounter with the Savior. Wow. But number two, the second lesson that I feel like we can learn from a cross bearer is following behind Jesus will alter your life, alter your future. Let's look at Luke. What did Luke say? See, Luke had something in it that the others didn't have in it. And it says, as they led him away, they seized one of Simon, seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross, and read that next part with me, to carry it behind Jesus. That means that all the way out of Calvary, Simon would have been looking at the back of Jesus, open and bare, bloody, beaten, scourged, and a mirror out of physical, emotional, and mental abuse that he had suffered. But moments before that this man, Simon, was looking at the back of Jesus, carrying his cross. I'm sure dozens of thoughts ran through his head. He might have thought, what could have this man done to deserve this kind of punishment? He must have been a horrible criminal or a murderer maybe. Why are all these people shouting in such anger toward this man? Yet why are so many weeping and crying and crying out for this man and calling him Messiah? What is going on? See, those moments behind Jesus changed everything for him. And I think that we can learn that when we position ourselves behind Jesus and we pick up the cross and we begin to follow him, everything will change. Your future will be altered. See, the problem is many times we go before Jesus and we say, come on, Jesus, 
Come with me to wherever I want to go. Come on, Jesus. I'm starting this new business. I want you to bless it. Come on, Jesus. I'm getting in this relationship that really isn't holy and really isn't right. But come on, Jesus. Get your cross. Follow me. You guys aren't laughing. It's not, you're, <laughs> I know this is a little bit more of a serious message. But you get what I'm saying that many times we go ahead of God when God is calling us to walk behind him. And I don't think it's an accident that his eyes were upon the beaten body, the beaten flesh, the bruised flesh of Jesus to remind him of what Christ had done for him. See, I don't know in that process one day in heaven, I would like to talk to Simon and say, when was it, Simon? When was it in that moment? When was it that the light bulb turned on? When was it that you realized that you were carrying the cross of your Messiah? And if he was a Jewish man, <laughs> he, they, they're looking for their Messiah. They're crying out for their Messiah. That's what the Jewish people did. They were waiting. They were looking. They were expecting. And how, what a privilege that this man got seized out of the crowd and compelled to carry the cross. See, many people would look at that as a horrible opportunity. But to me, I think he's a pretty much a hero in my book that this man, and you know, we're called to follow Jesus. And I want to read you a few scriptures. First Peter 2.21 says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. Listen, these aren't the footsteps that we really want to follow. But as believers, these are the footsteps that we are called to walk in. We are called to walk in love. We are called to walk in sacrifice. We're called to walk in this way that Jesus walked. It's not easy. It's not just like this, you know, it says, why did, why does the road? Listen, it's a narrow road. It's not easy. There's some stumbling blocks along the way. There's a lot of hardships along the way. But listen, I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he walks. Because I'd rather follow Jesus through the hard and narrow places than go to the wide that leads to hell. John 8, 12 says again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Again, I wonder if in that moment, the light just turned on in Simon's life. I wonder even if that moment, do we have that picture of, G, uh, of Simon carrying the cross? And this is just a movie. I think they have it somewhere in there. I mean, this is, this is just, this is just a movie. But look at how close. I can only imagine that in this few miles or even less than a mile, that there was this connection that this man had with Jesus. And then in John 12, 26, it says, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. What is it saying? We are called to follow Jesus. I think sometimes we think of like, the song from the production, like, come follow me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not having flashbacks. Of the production. Come follow me. Is it, which, what, which show is that one? Is that the one we just did or another? Okay, it was, it was. Okay. How many of you saw the show? You know, I'm not going to sing it for you. Okay. I'm not the singer in the family. Okay. I might be a preacher, but I'm not a singer. Right. Come follow me. Whatever. It's like all that song. You know, we think of this and that's what it was in the beginning. That's what it was. But it's that and it's following him down the Via Della Rosa to Golgotha to sacrifice, to lay your life down for Jesus. But see, his life was forever changed. But the third thing I want to share, share with you, the third lesson. Ooh, you ready for this one? Cross-bearing will either make you or break you. A cross like this, they say maybe weighed about 165 or more pounds. Um, Peter, where are you at, Peter? Where's my friend? Peter, come here, Peter. He played Simon in the show. Come on. Come on, run, Peter. You got this. Move those legs. Come on. He's, mo he's moving. He's moving. 
You got called one of the first productions to carry this cross, huh? When you first came in. Can you just lift the, can you, can, I'm so sorry, I'm asking you to do this. I don't want to mess up your jet. Can you just kind of carry it across a little bit? It's, it's, is it light? Doesn't look, oh, it doesn't look very light. And can you just stay with me just for a second? And can you imagine Jesus being completely open, his body completely ripped apart, this weight being on Jesus? So there was a point where Jesus literally was so emaciated, was so horribly in pain, he could not lift it. And that's why they grabbed Simon to come in, someone who had strength. Thank you, Peter. Don't drop it on me. Okay, all right. Give it up for Peter. Thank you. Just lay it right there. There it is. Lay it is. But see, cross bearing will either make or break you. That day, it made Simon. It made him into a disciple. It made him into a believer. But many of us, when we go through hardship and we have to carry the weight, we have to carry the burden. See, being in ministry, I know a lot of times people think, whoa, you get, you're the lead pastor. You know, you get, woo. And that I, it is the greatest honor in the world. But the weight is heavy. You carry the weight of hundreds of people. You carry the weight of leading and wanting to lead well and leading humbly and doing right in the eyes of God, honoring God, honoring the people. You deal with spiritual warfare, being in the front lines. It's not easy. A lot of people are broken by the weight of carrying their cross. But I believe God's raising up people in Maui. They're gonna bear their cross. They're gonna follow Jesus that will not give up, that will not back down, that will not throw in the towel when it gets hard and it gets rough but we'll take our cross to the end just like Jesus did. How many of you are with me? Come on, how many say, Pastor Shannon, I'm gonna carry my cross. Whether you have the money or not, whether you get the job or not, whether you get the girl or not, whether you get the guy or not, whether whatever, whether your body is healed or not. Yes, we believe that God is a God of miracles, but you know what? Those disciples suffered, but they didn't give up. They went. Peter went to the cross and hung upside down. Almost all of them gave their lives because they encountered Jesus. Dr. Morocco talked about today our world like a slippery slope that is just giving in to compromise that's weak sauce. Come on, look at your fr friend, the friend next to you. Look at somebody next to you and say, come on, don't be weak sauce. Don't be a weak sauce Christian. Listen, this is Sunday night, okay? This is a Sunday night tribe. Are you guys a Sunday night people? Can you handle this kind of message? Do I have people that can handle this? Can you handle? Okay, I'm like saying all these things from movie quotes. I can't handle it right now. Okay. I'm trying to lighten the load a little bit. I know this is really heavy. See, it will either drive you closer to God or farther away. It will either make you bitter or it will make you better. The sudden interruption in his life became a pivotal moment of transformation. This holy interruption changed his whole life and changed his family. His son, Alexander, his son, Rufus, his wife, he went home and shared the good news so much so that they received it and they took it on as, and they were not even there. And yet God did such a work in this man that he shared the good news. But lastly, the lesson I feel like we can learn from Simon as a cross bearer is carrying your cross will produce a generational blessing. Come on, that deserves a clap. That deserves a clap. Carrying your cross will produce a generational blessing. I was in Discover Track this morning at our Meet the Pastors breakfast and week one is discover our story, our story of our church. And I love telling the story and I love that I have the privilege to be a part of this great family that has truly carried their cross. When you look back to Grandma Esther and Grandpa Dan, Morocco, and their faithfulness to leave everything and go to India when no one supported them, they didn't get support. They, they, they were gonna get support and then the support got pulled back and they said, we're still going because God called us to go, right John? And not only did they live in India, one of the most impoverished places, horrific places, most demonized places in the world, they served, they carried their cross. They had revivals, I think every night for over a year. Then they moved to the Philippines where they're persecuted, 
were, they, they, there was death assault on Grandpa, Grandpa Dan. Grandma Esther, her dress one time got pulled completely off of her. He got hit in the head. And I don't even know if I'm telling all the stories correct. So you can correct me, Johnny. But the, this is people that picked up their cross because they, got, they had a call. God called them and they were going to fulfill the call. Why do we give up so easy? It's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it. But see, this is what's amazing is because they didn't give up. Look at Dr. Morocco. Look at Pastor Phil. Look at all, all Aunt Debbie and all the brothers serving Jesus. Look at now their kids serving Jesus. Now my kids serving Jesus. When you carry your cross, the impact goes so far beyond you. It will be generational. And listen, your prayers, your desires will far outlive you through your children and grandchildren. And when they see you give your heart to Jesus, now it doesn't mean that you give everything in the ministry and you forsake your family. That is not what I'm saying. You be a good mom and a good dad. You have a good marriage. You get days off. You spend time together. Come on. You be the same way you are at church as you are at home, vice versa. Amen? But you, you show sacrifice. You show laying your life down. You show sacrificial giving. You show serving and showing up on time and giving of your life because your kids will see it and they will love it and they will see your joy in it. Now, if you've got a bad attitude, I mean, they're going to see that too. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Pastor Josh should know by now that he shouldn't leave and give, let me preach because I just... <laughs> It's a domino effect. Let's put that picture up there and I'm closing. There's a picture, I think. There it is. It's a domino effect that when you carry the cross, you will see those around you completely be touched by the Lord. Keep serving Jesus. Keep loving God. Don't forsake the cross. You know, I'll just pause here as I close. Pastor Grace, you can come up wherever you are. Thank you. I don't know if you guys know this, some of you guys know this, but my maiden name is Cross. You didn't know, I'm glad. You didn't know, okay, good. I, somebody, I, how many of you knew that? How many of you had no idea that my maiden name? Okay, great, so it's half, 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 okay? But you know, it's interesting because that Cross, that name is an Anglo-Saxon origin and came from when the family lived as dwellers at a cross or a crucifix. Interesting. Kind of morbid, but interesting. <laughs> but I love that that's my, my maiden name, Cross. And I, I, I hold it dear because I, I, I want to dwell at the cross. <laughs> I want to dwell right where Jesus was, at the foot of the cross, and be there. And so in conclusion, we are all called to be cross bearers. We are all called to pick up our cross and to follow Jesus. And in Matthew 16, 24, it's a familiar verse, but I want to read it in the amplified version. It might bring it to light a little bit more. Are you with me? Don't fall asleep on me. I'm almost done. Are you guys still with me? You still here? Okay. You guys have been great. You've been like such a help in this sermon. You've asked the greatest questions. I'm telling you. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to follow me, as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living and, if need be, suffering, or perhaps dying because of faith in me. Matthew 10, 38 says, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. We're called to be cross bearers. But remember, the title of the sermon is what? The blessing of a cross bearer. Is it hard? 
Yeah. Does it take a lot of sacrifice? Yeah. Does it hurt at times? Yeah. Do you have to deny your flesh, your selfish, in, selfish interests sometimes? Yeah. But there's such a blessing. There's such a reward for picking up your cross and following Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. Oh, Jesus, we love you so much. We're so grateful for your sacrifice. Lord, tonight we all come before you just humbly and, and just really with a sober attitude and a sober heart to say, God, I want to not just talk the talk, but I want to walk the walk. I want to be one that will pick up the cross that you've given me, that I'll sacrifice, that I'll lay it down. That, Lord, you can interrupt me. Lord, that I want to follow behind you and not in front of you. Lord, I don't want to be broken by the weight, but I want it to make me into a disciple that would be strong and courageous. Lord, I want to see a generational impact. See, if that's your prayer tonight, and you say, Pastor Shannon, I just need prayer for a grace and a strength to carry my cross, to carry and follow Jesus. If that's you, can you just lift your hands tonight? If you say, Pastor Shannon, I just want a fresh commitment to follow completely after Jesus. I see those hands all over this place. Can we just all stand to our feet tonight? And as Pastor Grace begins to sing, and listen, we're going to leave this cross here, so guys, you don't have to move it. But as we sing, if you say, I want to make a fresh commitment to serve Jesus, or maybe you're here and you've never served Jesus, this is the perfect night. You're going to be like a Simon. You're going to encounter Jesus, and you're never going to be the same. But if you say, I want more of Jesus, or I want him, I want to receive him in my heart for the first time, on the count of three, when we begin to sing, I just want you to flood these altars tonight. Ready? One, two, three. Just come on up. tonight let it be your heart's cry tonight come on he 
He's shaking it up. He's stirring things up in your heart. Press into him tonight. Let him break off the sin. Let him break off the compromise. Let him stir up a fresh fire, a fresh passion for him tonight. Come on. Some of you are going to make a commitment that will be eternal tonight. of you say, Pastor Shannon, I'm going to pick up my cross. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm not going to do it my way anymore. If God wants to interrupt my life, if he wants to shake things up, if he wants to shake up the ground, if he wants to shake up the, the fallow ground in my heart, some of you, God's going to ask you tonight to do some amazing things. Some of you, God's going to call you to the ministry. Some of you, God's going to stir within you to lay something down. I don't know what it is, but God is calling you to a greater relationship with Him that would not just affect you, but affect the generations to come. So if that's you, come on, let's just say this prayer as a renewing prayer, as a recommitment to Him. Jesus, I lay my life down. I want your way. Your way is better. Go into the deep places of my heart. Heal the brokenness. Heal the trauma. Break off the sin, the shame, the addictions. Remove the compromise. I don't want to be lukewarm anymore. I want to be boiling hot. So Jesus, fill my life. Set me on fire. I believe that you went to that cross, not in vain, but for me. So I receive that and I'm going to pick up my cross tonight and I'm going to go where you say I need to go and I'm going to do what you say I need to do. And I'm going to say what you want me to say. I want your will. I want your way. Now give me the strength. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come on, just begin to pray right now. If you have the freedom to pray in the Holy Spirit, just begin to pray. If you've never been baptized, you can get filled right now. Just begin to open your mouth. There's a heavenly language that wants to come. It says that we, in groans and utterances unto the Lord, that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf to the Father. Just begin to open your mouth and just begin to speak it out. Just begin to worship. God's going to anoint you tonight. God's going to set you on fire tonight. God is going to speak to you in a fresh way. Fill right now. Fill them, Lord God. Empower them with a the boldness. Empower them, oh God, with the strength right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, fill them right now. Come on, all over, even those in the audience, all over. Just begin to lift your hands. God wants to touch you tonight. Don't just be another person in the crowd. You are going to get pulled out of the crowd tonight. Just like Simon was pulled out of the crowd. God knows you by name. God is calling you. He's calling your family. Those watching online. Just begin to receive right now in your living room. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. God is moving. God is touching you right now. Jesus you need God's spirit you need to be filled with his spirit in order to carry that mantle you can't do it in your own strength say some of you might say Pastor John I've tried to do it before and I failed can't do it in your own strength 
You can't do it in your own strength. You got to keep running to the foot of the cross. Every time you feel that weakness coming, every time you mess up, you come back to the foot of the cross. You come back and you see what Jesus did for you. Listen, you know, tonight I just feel so stirred that we just need to spend time with Jesus. I want to release you if you have to go, but I want the worship team. I just want you guys to worship because I feel like God is doing a deep work in many of you. God is calling you to a place of radical faith and radical commitment. You can stay in your seat. You can go. We got our lobby if you want a fellowship, but I just want to close in a prayer. And then if you feel led just to, to be at this altar, just to seek him, I just encourage you to do that for a little bit longer, but let me bless you tonight. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too intense. Praise Jesus. <laughs> I hope this word ministered to you. Lord, bless your people tonight. I never take lightly the privilege that I have to minister your word. It's such an honor, Lord. And so I pray that this word by your spirit would sear the hearts of your people, that we would live different after tonight, that we'd walk different, talk different, think different that we're carrying you with us, Jesus, that you're with us wherever we go. Bless your people, bless them this week, use them. Lord God, may they be a light, may they take this cross message, may they talk, take the gospel, the good news to everyone they come in contact with. And may we be a light and follow you in Jesus' name, amen. We love you, we're just gonna continue to worship. God bless you.